Hey guys, today I'm filming a review and demo of this look featuring the Makeup Revolution Emily Edit the Once palette. So this palette was made in collaboration with Emily Noel 83, who is one of my favorite YouTubers. I think she is so sweet and genuine. She just recently hit a million subscribers, which is amazing. Even though Emily and I don't have the same skin type, we don't love all the same products, I still really appreciate her videos and her as a person. Emily is the only person where I actually watch her vlogs. As soon as I see them pop up, I click on them because I love her and her family. I think her kids and her husband seem amazing. I'm so happy for Emily that a brand recognized all of her greatness and decided to collaborate with her. And I'm personally excited that it is an affordable brand collaboration. So Emily came out with two different palettes, one called The Needs and the one that I have, which is called The Wants. So The Needs palette retails for $15. You get a matte under eye setting powder, a matte contour slash bronzer. You have a matte peachy blush and you have a highlighter as well as six eyeshadows. And the concept of that one is just for really quick, easy on the go makeup, which I think is a really great idea, but I did not purchase that one because it isn't something that I need in my life and I felt like a couple of the eyeshadows were a little similar and redundant for me that being that there's only six and you guys know I don't really wear deep eyeshadows that much so I think that is a great idea at a great price but it just doesn't fit my needs and then we have this once palette here which is $20 and it comes with 24 eyeshadows very beautiful and this absolutely ginormous mirror which is a amazing that they have such a huge mirror and this is some nice like sturdy plastic packaging and this is only 20 bucks which is incredible the needs palette had a really beautiful pink packaging and this one is a light peachy shade which i think looks beautiful it has emily's signature on it and these are 24 full-size eyeshadows retailing for 20 bucks which is absolutely amazing and what's even better is that this collaboration is permanent. So you are able to find these products on Ulta.com, in Ulta stores, and also on the Makeup Revolution website, which I think is amazing. It is very rare that a collaboration product stays permanent, and I'm so happy that that is happening for Emily because she totally deserves it, and I'm so excited for her. I would definitely link Emily's video talking all about the palette, how she chose the shades, how she named them. Emily also, I think once a week, has been doing different videos using these palettes which I think is really fun so I will have her playlist link for you guys so you can check out and see even more looks and get more info on these palettes so even though I love Emily I wasn't sure if I was going to buy this palette at first because I've never tried makeup revolution eyeshadows and I've heard varying opinions that some of their palettes are great and some of them really aren't good so I was like oh boy do I really want to buy that and take a chance but I was lucky enough to be able to get a 30% off coupon for makeup revolution so I decided to pick this up especially when I saw the swatches in Emily's video and the color selection I thought it looked pretty and it would be worth a shot so unfortunately I will not be able to compare the formula of this palette to other makeup revolution eyeshadows because I've never tried them but I know that Kaylee Bote did do a review video on this and she did mention that she felt like the eyeshadow quality was on par with all of makeup revolution other eyeshadows so I will have Kaylee's review video linked down below as well so here are all of the shades in this palette you have the cream which is a matte hobby is a matte prayer is a matte good vibes is oh. prayer is a matte grateful is a shimmer good vibes is a shimmer side hustle is a shimmer midwest is a matte do is paid is a matte eve rose is a shimmer Belle Violet is a shimmer. Capricorn is a shimmer. P5 is a matte. Oh Heavens is a shimmer. Love Tons is a matte. Pizzazz is a shimmer. Family is a matte. Top Story is a shimmer. Apartment is a matte. Cupcake is a shimmery satin color. Laugh Cry is a matte. Cheer is a matte. Heartbeat is a shimmer. Corduroy is a matte dark and early is a matte. So unfortunately I wasn't able to create a ton of looks with this palette by the time I had to film this review and that's because I wore this look probably 
four, maybe even five times on days when I was planning to film and then for whatever reason it didn't happen. So I uh, put this look on so many times that I ran out of days to try other looks, which is a bit of a shame, but I do feel like I've tried enough of these shadows to truly get a feel for this palette overall. So now I will include the footage of the looks I created with this palette. Here's today's look using my palette of the month. As a base on my lid, I'm using Laura Mercier Caviar Stick in the shade Rose Gold. From the Once palette, I'm wearing Midwest as my transition color, Dues Paid as my crease color, Cheers as my outer corner outer crease color, and Top Story as my lid shade. Here what the eyes look like up close. On my cheeks, I'm wearing Becca Mineral Blush in Songbird. On my lips, I'm wearing the ColourPop Lippy Stick in Parker. Here's today's look using my palette of the month. As a base on my lid, I use the Maybelline Color Tattoo in Pomegranate Punk. I use Midwest as my transition color, Dews Paid as my crease color. I buffed over my transition and crease with a Laugh Cry, and then in my outer corner, I use Cheer. And on my lid, I use the shade Good Vibes. Here what the eyes look like up close. On my cheeks, I'm wearing MAC Blush in Melba. For my lips, I lined them with the ColourPop Lippy Pencil in Aquarius, and I filled it in completely with the Kat Von D Everlasting Liquid Lipstick in the shade Ludwig. Also, I'm going to link my first impression and follow up on the Tarte Shape Tape Foundation up in the cards because in my final thought portion of that video, I did create another look with this palette that I didn't like at all. You can see how it looks there, but I didn't want to fill in the details of it. I wiped it off right after that video because I was not happy with it. And that is because of one specific shade that I felt like ruined the look. I will talk about it. And it's probably just because of the way that I used that shade, but nevertheless, I was not happy with the final results of that look. But then I will, at the end, in case you're not interested, I will include a demo of this look, which is a recreation from a look that was created by Kathleen Light. And I'm using the purple shades in this palette, which I've heard maybe the most negative experiences about those particular shades. So I recreated Kathleen's look. I showed you what specific brushes I used because I had some trouble with those shades at first as well, but I found certain ways to get them to work for me. And as a lot of us know, purple shades can be a little tricky to formulate. So if you guys want to see how I created this look, it will be at the end of the video. So for the formula texture and pigmentation of this palette, for the matte shades, they all have a bit of kick up in the pan. It's not too too much but it is a decent bit i do have a bit of flakiness with some of the shimmer shades in the pan i do get some fallout on my face with both the mattes and the shimmer shades but it isn't too bad where I would be so frustrated I wouldn't want to use the shades. And then as far as pigmentation goes, it totally depends on the colors and I find that the matte neutrals in this palette perform the best out of all of the shades, which really isn't much of a surprise. I feel like matte neutrals must just be pretty easy to formulate because those shades usually work well for me from most every brand and there was no exception with this palette. So I will show you the shades I use that I thought performed the best, the ones that I had some trouble with as well. So from this palette, the eyeshadows that I thought performed the best would be The Cream, Hobby, Prayer, Midwest, Deuce Paid, Love Tons, and Cheer. Laugh Cry, I didn't love it in the look that I created, but it was really pigmented and it blended out nicely, so that performed well. I just didn't love it in my look. So all of the mattes over here are amazing. I also thought this matte brown apartment worked really well, and it didn't go on too, too intense, which was good for me, and the fact that I don't love really dark brown. So I did, unfortunately, use this in the look that I didn't like, but I didn't have the problem with that shade. That one worked well for me. I do think this dark and early is more of a wearable black. It reminds me of MAC Carbon where it is a little bit more of a sheer black, which can be good because it might be easier to work with and add into a look. So then we have Family and Pi Fi. Family is one that was definitely more sheer. That looks like a really rich purple. It didn't look rich on the eye. I, I had the same experience with P Fi. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. This one was a little easier to work with, but 
similar experience a little on the sheer side and then the one color I had the worst experience with really the only matte that didn't work for me was this amazing peacocky teal corduroy tray. I tried to put this in my outer corner and outer crease and wow it was terrible. It looked patchy, it wasn't crazy pigmented, it would not blend out for crap and it totally totally ruined the look. My crease looked super muddy, it was just not good at all. Now that one might be awesome packed on the lid but I haven't tried it that way. So out of all of the mattes that's really the one that I'm not happy with at all. Like I said, Pi Fi and Family aren't the most pigmented but as I did today with family, I am able to make them work. So overall, I do enjoy the mattes in this palette and I just think I'm such a warm tone matte person that those are just so beautiful to me. And then for the shimmers, oh heavens, I didn't really use. I think this is best as like an inner corner highlight or a shimmery brow bone highlight and that's just not something that I do. This shade Cupcake here, I really don't like. This one, I just don't it's kind of like it's really soft but it's very blah to me it's not really shimmery it's not matte i guess it's like a satin finish but you can barely see it so that color is just like no for me i do really like the shades eve rose and belle violet and they're named after her girls which is another reason why i love them but those were harder to work with you will see them in the demo at the end of the video I have other purples that perform better than these, but these are a little bit more pastel-y than other purples I have that work well, but those could have been better. They're beautiful shades, but they could have performed better for me. Then you have these three shades, Good Vibes, Heartbeat, and Pizzazz. Yes, I can see the difference in the undertones of these shadows, but I certainly do not think it was necessary to have all three. So this is Pizzazz, Good Vibes, and Heartbeat. And again, like I said, I do see the differences in them, but I don't find all three of them necessary. So we have Pizzazz, Good Vibes, and Heartbeat. Good Vibes is definitely my favorite one in the palette. It's the one I created a look with, but I feel like the look I create with Good Vibes, I could substitute either of those shades and the look would end up the same. Then you have that shimmery brown Capricorn, which to me is just like, whatever. It's not that shimmery. It's also like more of like a satiny brown, which I just don't see how I would use that one. Maybe for a nice subtle smoky eye, but for me, that is not a necessary shade and it's definitely not one that I would reach for. Then you do have these two greens, Grateful and Side Hustle, which I think are very pretty. I especially love Side Hustle. I definitely love olive eyeshadows in general but I do have quite a few of them. So that's Grateful and that's Side Hustle. I don't know how much I would use this light green shade. I don't know if I would love that one on me. And then Side Hustle is pretty, but I have other olives that I like more that are a little bit more of like a golden olive. And I think that this light shade Grateful has a lot of shimmer, but then this Side Hustle shade, it again is looking like a satin shade. So for me, when I have so many shimmery eyeshadows that look really foiled and dynamic on the eyes, subtle shimmer ones like that just don't do anything for me and I just don't want to reach for them. But then you have the best shimmer in the entire palette, which is Top Story. It is a stunning like golden coppery bronze. I don't even know how to describe it, but look. Yeah, it's like a golden coppery color. It is stunning. That is my favorite shimmer shade in the palette. That one is so rich. It has a lot of metallic sheen. That was the first look I created was using that on my lid. And then some of the warm mattes in my crease. Freaking loved it. I thought it was so, so beautiful. And that is a shade I would reach for over and over again, but it's a shimmery golden copper. I've got a hundred of them. And when I really think about this palette, all the shades I would reach for, all these matte neutrals, that color there, the shades I think perform the best, that I know I would reach for the most, I have these shades. These right over here remind me of the Anastasia Modern Renaissance palette. And then that top story, I have a bunch of super shocks, a bunch of shades in other palettes because I love warm tone palettes. I have so many of them. I don't need this palette and I won't reach for this palette for the warm matte neutrals. And then the purpley shades here, I think this look is beautiful, but 
I also have other purple palettes that I like much more than this. I have other purple singles I think perform a little better, easier that I will reach for over this one. So to give you my final thoughts on this palette, I think the quality is good, not great. Definitely think you need a cream base with the shimmer shadows. The neutral mattes perform incredible. The colorful mattes, you need to work with them a little bit more. It's an amazing price. $20 is fantastic for 24 eyeshadows. And if you use a coupon, even better. So the quality is good. The price is great, but it's not an amazing palette. And I cannot believe I'm saying this out loud to you guys, but I'm going to return this palette. And the reason for that is I can pretty much guarantee I wouldn't reach for this ever again after I filmed this review. And I love Emily so much. This hurts me that I feel like I'm hurting Emily by not liking her product. But the thing is, I just think I'm not, I must not be crazy about Makeup Revolution eyeshadow formulas in general. I don't think it has anything to do with Emily at all. I think she chose beautiful shades in this palette. I love the name. She created a great variety here. It doesn't look too random, but yet it's not too basic. So I would love to know your all's thoughts if you guys have tested this palette. Thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure you stay till the end if you want to see the demo of this look. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye guys. So I have already applied my eyeshadow primer and set it. So I'm gonna be taking prayer as my transition color. And I'm going to apply that with my Morphe R38 brush. So just picking up a good amount of this on the brush and windshield wipe motions back and forth in my crease and right above it. This shade is very pigmented and blends out nicely. This is one of my favorite shades in the palette. And I think that the undertone of this works really well with these purple shadows. So I'm just feathering it up, whatever's left in the brush, to get an even better gradient. But as I do with all of my powder shadows, I'm going to apply a cream base on my lid. Today I'll be using the L'Oreal Infallible Eyeshadow Stick in the shade Enduring Rose. So I'm just going to draw that right on my lid. So taking the shade Eve Rose, which looks very purple in the pan, but truly is not a purple shadow. So it is a light shade that has some pink and some silvery gold particles in there. So that's what that looks like. I don't know why in the pan it looks so much more lilac, but it really is not a very lilac color, but it goes well with other purples. But that shade, I did have a little trouble getting that to be intense. So over a cream base works well. And I apply with the Morphe M169, which is a really, really dense, really pointed brush. And I'm taking Eve Rose, and this is a color that I just focus on the inner part of my lid and just really pack it on. And I know in Emily's video talking about the palette, she said it's best to apply and swipe, which I definitely think is true. You can see the intensity of this color. It's just on the lighter side and it's not purple. Then I'm gonna take this beautiful shimmery purple Bell Violet and I'll put this on the rest of my lid. Now I'm going to apply my MAC 239 Flat Shader Brush. With these two shades, I do kind of dig in the pan, like run back and forth with my brush to try to get as much product as possible. Just with purple shadows in general, they seem to be a little bit tricky to work with. So it just takes a bit to build them up on the brush. And then like Emily suggested, press and sweep. And then I'm going to pick up some more product to cover the whole lid. But I do think Emily's technique works well with the shimmer shades. So if you're having trouble, I would recommend trying that out. Next, I'm going to take this matte purple family as my crease color. And I'm going to apply that with my Morphe R39 brush. Looks just like a Sigma E25. I do have a bit of trouble with this shade as well. So I'm picking up a decent amount here. And I'm going to put this in my outer corner and blend it out into my crease. And there is pigment there, but if you guys see how deep that color is, this does look pretty sheer. So I'm setting the base for my crease color with this shade. Then I'm going in with the shade Love Tons. And then I'm going to apply with my MAC 286 Duo Fiber Tapered Blending Brush. And this is a really, really pigmented shade, definitely one of my 
favorites and I am going to go right over where I put that dark purple color. Add a little bit more pinky red to the look. And then I'm going back in with that dark purple family with this same MAC brush and it applies so much more pigmented now. Having that base layer of family going in with that layer of love tons and then now going in with another layer of family with a different brush like look at that it's so much more intense now so this is actually a look that Kathleen Lights created and then I recreated her look and it didn't come out as good for me so then when I layered everything this way use these certain brushes I was able to make it work quite nicely but that's why I wanted to share this specific look with you guys is because it is including some of the shades that don't have the best pigmentation but I am able to get a nice look using them but they're a little tricky. So then taking Eve Rose on my finger really intensifying that shade there then taking Belle Violet to intensify the rest of the lid. I'm going to take the matte cream shade called the cream which is great to set your primer if you do have a fair complexion. Taking this in a little color pop blending brush and I am going to use it to clean up the outer corner of my shadow as well as right under my lash line. And this is the final look and I'm just going to apply it some mascara but you could do liner as well. 